Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about protecting your equipment. So I'm Daniel Norton, photographer in New York. I make videos like this and about technique and about philosophy. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, please subscribe. Um, when I say protecting your equipment, I'm talking more about from things like theft. So you may know if you're a follower of mine that uh, my studio was robbed and we, in the end, got back most of the gear. Um, I don't want to get into details of that here. I'm not going to do that. Um, if you really want to know, test your Google Foo, you'll find it. Uh, places like Petapixel did articles about it. But in the end, what makes my what makes the case interesting is that we got most of our stuff back. And uh, to me, for you, I guess, because people were asking me, like, how did you do that? Like, what do you do? And so I want to kind of go through my process of kind of like, process and thoughts of like things that you can do to kind of know your equipment's going to be safe or the best bet for something to work out for you. Um, <clears throat> so number one, uh, register your equipment, right? When you get a new piece of equipment, I know for a fact that most people do not register their stuff because they're just like, blah, 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 blah. Okay, not only does that give you the warranty, but when you register a piece of equipment, the serial numbers are there with the company. So if you lost everything, right, all your paperwork, you could reach out. In fact, for one piece of equipment, I did do that. I went and logged into my serial number and printed out the page. So you want to register everything that you get that has the ability to register it, whether it be a bag, if they have it, lights, cameras, anything you have, register it. In addition to that, if it has a serial number, you know, I have a, a notepad. It's actually the notepad app that I use uh, that syncs with all my stuff that I keep track of all my serial numbers. I also photograph every new piece of equipment I get and every new thing more for like, if I really need a picture of it, finding those pictures would not be easy because I probably could do a better job keeping track of it. Um, but in any case, I do do that just because it's simple and oftentimes too, I'm like, oh, look, there's paper crap. I'm going to put it online. A lot of people do that, right? But serial numbers and registering it, that's key. Um, I also want to speak for a second about um, if you share equipment, because like I am part of a shared space. We're part of a co-op, right? A community of photographers. So one thing that we all do is we all have a uh, spike tape, you know, colorful gaffer tape, and we all mark our stuff with different colors. So like I have profile lights, Seth has profile lights, other people have profile equipment. We all have different tape on our equipment so that we know whose is who, because sometimes you're borrowing somebody's light or you're borrowing this piece of equipment and you you want to make sure that you know you get them back to them whether you're not digging something that's not yours or that you get the right one you know i pick up my a1 and not sets right so you want to do that not because you think that god forbid another photographer would steal something from you but that you just want to know that you have all your stuff that things are in order and that if somebody borrows something they can look through and be like oh yeah that green tape green tape is mine is daniel's you know so if you're in part of a co-op or you share equipment which would be awesome if you do um, because I think that makes it so much easier when you help other photographers out and they help you out in that way. You know, think about some kind of system like that. It makes life a lot easier. Um, I also mark on my tape if I need to, like, I write group A, or group B, or whatever on certain lights that way. I just always use them that way. The tape's useful. We can never get enough use of gaffer's tape as a photographer, right? It's like, that's a thing that we use. Um, so in addition to that, it's kind of like the simple. That's what happens if it goes missing, right? Um, <clears throat> I would recommend, although I'm not always the best at this, keeping your stuff in a certain place always. This will help you, like for our situation, when I knew that something was stolen, I was able to look into different bags and know what should be in there. So it's tempting to like have one bag and just load it up as you need it or whatever, but I literally have a bag for each of my systems. I have bags for all my lighting systems. Everything's in separate bags. It's like that so that, well, first of all, it's fast to grab when I have to go out and shoot. Um, which is great, and I think most pros do this, but even if you're not that, right, um, having your stuff in designated spots will help you know when it's not there. So that'll help you. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about insurance. This is a bigger issue, and again, I'm not an insurance salesman or proprietor, and it's different state to state and country to country. You know, I would say that there's three kind of basic types of insurance that I've dealt with. Um, as a photographer that I think are useful to have. So the first one is liability insurance. Liability insurance is for stuff like if somebody comes to my studio or out in the park and they get hurt, right? I put a light stand on the ground while I'm shooting and a pedestrian walks by and trips over it. Uh, a light falls and bangs a model and they get a bruise and they can't work for a couple of days, stuff like that. You know, it's, it's basically somebody getting hurt is for the most part. It also covers some destruction of property. Like if my light stand falls over and smashes a fence or something, but basically it's so when people want to sue you, you know, you have insurance for that. So that's called liability insurance. 
standard photographers is like they like a million or two million. It really depends on where you are. You know, that might sound like a lot, but you know, it doesn't take much when somebody breaks a leg to add up. So that's just super useful to have. And in fact, a lot of places like rental studios and stuff will not even allow you to use them unless you have a liability policy. So keep that in mind. Um, there's definitely been stories out there um, where photographers have done stuff with, with subjects and they've got hurt and then like there was no insurance, nothing to cover it and it was a nightmare. So it, get that, you know, not just to protect yourself, but to protect that person, right? You don't want to be, because you, you could be like, well, I don't, I'm don't, i broke, what are they going to sue me for? Yeah, well, who cares about that? What, what about they're hurt, you know? So get liability insurance. It's, it's good to have. The other types of insurance that are kind of tie in together, they cover your, uh, your equipment. So one type is the, the insurance that covers the equipment you own. So this is one where you list all your gear and you're like, it has a value. Um, if you add a piece of gear to it, you, you know, it'll go up and down. What you want to do here is make sure that your policy has something to the effect of, again, I'm not an insurance person to get this, the exact quote from them, but a replacement value. What you want is your insurance to be set up so that if you buy your brand new shiny Sony A9 right now, and then three years from now, something happens and it needs to be replaced, or they don't go, well, that's a three-year-old camera, so it's only worth a quarter of what you bought for it. You want to get enough money to replace it, right? So replacement value, I think, is usually the term that's used when I've dealt with insurance like that. But again, ask your insurance person. You want replacement value. Obviously, it's more expensive. But definitely get that on a key equipment. Well, it's usually on the pole policy, but get it. It's important. The third type is um, often called a waiver. Uh, and you can sometimes get it added to your equipment um, uh, insurance. And basically what it is is when you rent or borrow something, what you do is you get a, a certificate. This is what rental companies ask for generally. So you get this certificate of insurance that temporarily um, your insurance covers those items. So let's say, for instance, if I'm going to rent a, a Hasselblad, right? So I'm running this like Hasselblad H6 system with lenses and everything else, and it comes out to like, I don't know, 15 grand, 20 grand, whatever. Well, I might have 50 grand on my equipment, but that's on my equipment, right? That 50 grand insurance doesn't generally cover somebody else's gear, and that Hasselblad is somebody else's. So you call your insurance company, you let them know that you're renting, they send it to the rental house that covers you for that gear. So those are kind of the three types of insurance uh, that you generally want to have. There might be more in those intricacies, and again, I'm, not a, I'm waiting for the nasty comments about how I shouldn't talk about things I don't know about. I know about it only from having it, uh, so, you know, that's, that's it, right? So, since I'm doing this kind of video, I figure um, I'm going to throw in a few other, like, tips as far as, like, traveling and stuff, because we're here, right? So, so I'm in a commercial studio. We have in the hallways, you know, uh, security cameras, um, and people do ask about having cameras in the studio. If you're going to have a camera in your studio, you need to make sure that people know it's there. Don't have some hidden camera in your studio because, yeah, I shouldn't have to say this. Like, you got people there, you know, and they're be, they're, they don't know that they're being filmed. That's kind of BS. So make sure that people know that they're being filmed if you put it. Anyways, inside the studio isn't usually the best place to have the camera, in my opinion. You want to put it outside. You want to put it, like, by the door, you know, because that's where the, the bad guys are going to come in or by a window or whatever. Um, alarm systems, those things are useful, you know, to a certain extent. The reality is, is that if somebody steals your stuff and there's no evidence of who that person was, aka video footage, you're going to have a hard time catching them. So it might be worthwhile, depending on how you're set up, to install something like that if you don't have it. Um, you know, things like uh, Ring, uh, I can recommend that I use personally. Um, you know, that's the doorbell on my house. And when anybody approaches my front door within like 20 meters, I get an alert on my phone. And it literally tells me that somebody in front, in front of my door and it starts filming them, you know. So that's how I get a lot of good pictures of the deer walking by actually. But, uh, but anyways, the, the uh, you know, this films them. It's a doorbell. Obviously when they ring it, it rings. But I, it films them and I pay I think 30 bucks, 40 bucks a year. And it holds the footage I think for like 30 days. So basically I know when anybody walks up to my front door and I have a video of them. And I can also talk through it, which is kind of neat if I'm not home. You know, I could be like, UPS car, leave that package. And that way we're good to go. So something like that might be really useful and it's very obvious that it's a, it's a camera. So when traveling, you know, try to keep your equipment. What I found is that if you're too uh, obviously concerned that you have something expensive, it attracts people to see you. So 
I'm not saying don't be concerned, but try not to have camera bags that say camera bag on it, you know, and equipment like that. Usually more discreet stuff is better when you're traveling. And also set yourself up that you don't have to open up your entire bag so all this equipment is exposed to everybody to reach in and get your passport. Think about how you pack your stuff so that your equipment is not viewable by people in the public at all times, especially when you're traveling. You know, and if you think like I use the Think Tank, the roller cases, they've got a lock, you know, that locks the actual case, that's TSA. And then there's also another lock that comes with it. You can lock your case to stuff. In fact, the other day, the train was crazy crowded and I couldn't get it up in the overhead, so I had to leave it at the other end of the train. And I just went down and strapped it to the thing and put it in. It was totally fine. I mean, it would take somebody to have those tools and, you know, generally they're, somebody's going to see them doing it. So um, it's pretty safe for short measure. Um, oh, also I should probably mention, and again, this is, I'm not an insurance person, but if you have a house and your equipment's in your house, uh, it may fall under your homeowner's policy, but I would check to make sure. Because a lot of times if it's something more expensive, it, they might not cover it. So make sure that if you've got that $5,000 camera, that it's covered. So um, anybody who's thinking that right now, same thing in your auto policy. It may not be covered there. So don't think that you're safe just because you have that. Um, you oftentimes can get this, this insurance for your business, small business insurance, through the same people that do your homeowners and your auto insurance. So it shouldn't be that hard. Just call them up and tell them what you want. Um, also, if you join things like ASMP or PPA and those kind of things, they all have you know deals where you can get insurance. So... It's worth having. I mean, the reality is, is that most people in the world are not thieves. And we can't live our life in fear. But we need to also be prepared that something could happen. Have you guys ever had this situation? I guess that's what I want to ask. I actually was saying to Seth that uh, when I was uh, a photo assistant, um, the uh, I worked for this guy one time. Um, and he pulled out this RB system. So if anybody remembers the RB. And he was like, yeah, I bought this from a homeless guy for $50. And it was a beautiful RB system in a hard case and everything. And I said to the guy, I'm like, 50 bucks from a homeless person? Anything that was stolen? He was like, yeah, it probably was. And I never worked for that guy again. I, I refused. He called me other times. I, because to me, like, really? Like, I would have paid 50 bucks to buy it. Clearly, I wasn't going to let the homeless person walk away with it. But at the same time, I would have at least made some effort to figure out whose gear it was. I mean, that was a lot of gear and some working photographer's gear. And you don't care and you just take it. So, guys, look out for each other. You find a camera somewhere, don't be like, ooh, free camera. Think about it. Who, this is somebody's camera. How would you feel if it was missing? So... Try to, you know, take care of each other out there. I think it's important. Um, also, um, not related to this, and if you got this far, then you're probably a regular uh, watcher, so uh, your opinion counts. Uh, I want to do more stuff for you guys this year. We're coming into 2020, and um, at the beginning of last year, I was very uh, excited to try to do three videos a week, but clearly that wasn't uh, going to work out, and I switched over to just one. Um, I'm thinking about doing shorter videos uh, that are very specifically on technical questions I get because I get a lot of technical questions that I often have to just write a quick one-liner to, to explain it. I'm thinking of making like short two-minute videos, kind of like this where I just explain it usually as opposed to taking a picture because those things I can do fast and I can do a lot of them. So if that's something you want to see, um, let me know because I'm going to start maybe trying to do it. Uh, they won't be as high quality as this sitting on the beautiful porch, but you know, I'll do it with my phone or maybe I'll do it with this. I don't know. I'm using the Mevo for people who don't know. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell, and um, I'll see you next time.